Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Um, uh, today we're going to be converting a uh, Bruder D11 to make it go RC. I've done uh, one of these once before. This will be my second one I've done. Uh, still learning, nowhere near an expert, um, but had a lot of fun with the last time and took it to my first uh, RC event and I wasn't in the door probably 20 minutes and a guy bought it, for, <laughs> bought it off me. Uh, didn't go plan on to sell it, but I thought Hey, might as well. I like building stuff, so we're gonna build another one. So we got the, uh, like I said, the Bruder D11. I got a couple um, Beto, BETU digital servos. Um, all metal gears, supposed to be a little bit higher, 20 kg digital servos. We will have to modify them for continuous rotation. Uh, the other continuous rotation servos I used in the past were just a little weak. So this will be my first time using these. Hopefully, trying to get them a uh, get something a little bit stronger. Uh, basic everything about here got off Amazon. Uh, definitely going, oops, sorry, bumped the camera there. Definitely going with the Flysky i6X. I love these things. They're simple, they're inexpensive, uh, easy to do a mix, dual rates, all type of stuff on here. And these X models can be, actually be a 10 channel receiver. Got a couple projects I'm working on where I'm hoping to bind multiple receivers and use uh, most of the 10 channels. So that'll be our transmitter and receiver. Receiver. Picked up a couple. Uh, 2S batteries, 7.4 volts. Uh, again, Amazon fine, get them in a two pack. So, uh, decent sized battery, we'll be able to stuff that under there um, and get that in there for decent power. Also picked up a couple linear, slide this stuff off to the side, two inch mini electric linear actuators. We'll open these up real quick. And that's what'll take place of these plastic lift cylinders. So we'll hack these off and put the miniature uh, linear actuators in place. Ooh, blades falling out. That's one way to cut your thumb open. So we'll get these opened up here. Ah. Rip it open. So I've used things on a couple projects. I got a low boy I made that used an inch and a half linear actuator for raising and lowering the neck. Hoping to make a video kind of showing that a little bit later. Um, but these work well. They fit in there pretty good. Um, gives you the nice nice range that you need and you can control them individually to give yourself lift and tilt so we'll have fun with these sticking them in there might as well make this sort of like an unboxing video as well and in most of my RC conversions builds stuff like that I try to add LEDs I don't go all out and buy a $500 sound kit light kit all that type of stuff I just get a bunch of LEDs because you can get them cheap one thing I did find I want to do I got some RC switches. I'm looking forward to integrating onto the dozer. So we can use one of the channels to turn the lights on and off. So if you want to conserve some of your battery power when you're out running, uh, we'll use this RC switch to turn light LED lights on and off. So we'll utilize one channel and have a light switch. So that's kind of neat. Um, so that'll be something new I haven't done yet that we'll get into. Um, LEDs wise, I'll stick four up, two on each. Oops, sorry, I can't see that there. I'll stick two on each cylinder. Uh, we'll stick two in the um, on the cabs, and then I got some. I bought a pack of like 50 blinking LEDs, and so we'll drill out these amber things and stick some blinking LEDs in. You know, for basically a few cents, be able to add some beacons without paying for the uh, uh, strobe beacons, which is all really cool. If you want to go all out, highly recommend those. Um, but for the drive, you know, these we're going to reutilize the plastic gears. This is going to be an inexpensive build. Um, materials and everything will be under $300. Uh, everything you've seen I've bought so far from Amazon Amazon uh, consists about $200. These things you'll pick up for around $60. So that and some miscellaneous supplies, it's an under $300 build. So we'll have forward, reverse, uh, blade up, down, tilt, left, right, and we'll have lights. Uh, we could always have another channel for controlling the ripper. Um, but I'm not a big ripper fan. I usually take these off and leave them off. So, but for dr the drive sprockets, I uh, came up with my own design. Uh, if you, well, here, you can see I have a couple 3D printers, a couple Creality Ender 3s. One's a 3 and one's a uh, uh, 3 Pro. Love the Creality printers. Highly recommend them. If you're getting into the hobby, getting into 3D printing, uh, it's a great entry level printer. Cannot recommend it enough. Um, but I like to design all my own parts and 3D print all my own parts. So here's a couple spacer blocks that will glue inside the frame. 
Got some holes in there for mounting the servos to so they can bolt in. Um, I like to make this much as much bolt in as possible because things break. So when you break a servo, break something, uh, or even break a sprocket, you can um, uh, you can replace the stuff. So they are 3D printed. It's not metal. And if you ever decide you ever want to go metal tracks, uh, you can go that. So what I did though for attaching the uh, servos is we'll, we'll do some drilling and trimming inside the brooder. Um, and then once you mount the servos in there, we'll use the kind of the standard servo hook. I do want to find some of these in metal. Uh, but I basically 3D printed a recessed area where that will fit. So you know you can keep it centered. So that'll fit right in there and we'll screw it into that. And then I 3D printed a cap so you can remove the cap and bolt the sprocket on. So once this is screwed there, then and your servo is mounted, you slide it on and you can put a screw on the inside and then put the cap on to close it off and put the nice little cat logo in there to try to make it look as, as authentic as possible. So that will be that. And then said, got a couple uh, uh, servos here, uh, kind of a little bit higher rated. You know, it's more than your standard plastic hobby servos. They're a, a all metal gears, kind of metal housings. Uh, you can kind of see the name on them if you want to order them off of Amazon, if I'm getting that close enough. Um, but the, as you see, it's a 270 degree. So we will need to modify this for continuous rotation. And so we'll actually do that here. I've already just done one just to make sure I, it would work right. And so we'll do another one as we get in here. You know what? Why not? Now is just as good a time as any. So we'll plug these in. I'll kind of show the difference between a standard servo and one that's set up for continuous rotation. So we'll throw all those, throw all those parts in there. And we'll open this up. Set this to the side. So let me get my receiver. I got a simple little power adapter made up. I need to make a better one up. This one's kind of chintzy. So we'll plug it in. I'll plug servo number one and servo number two. Let me grab one of these batteries. And we'll plug our receiver in. So our receiver's on, powered up power up the transmitter and so this one is unmodified so I'm just gonna cut a hold of here so you can see it and this one has been modified so let's see which ones watch so here as I go left let me try to get this a little closer you'll see it'll go left and then back to center and as I hold this all the way that's all it does this one on the one on your right has been modified for continuous rotation so as I push the lever forward it just keeps spinning it goes on and on as I go back, again, it'll just keep spinning in the opposite direction. And we do that, there's a potentiometer in here that tells it how far it's gone and when to stop at its limits. So we're just gonna disable the potentiometer and that will give us the continuous rotation. So, unplug power. And that was done. Let me turn this receiver off. And we do wanna keep this stuff handy because we will need the receiver for testing purposes to make sure we've done it right. So let me get my uh, screwdriver here. And you might hear the pitter patter of little feet, like probably most of us in the RC world, we're stuck in our basement. So, kids and I went to McDonald's. They all, we had uh, all went to the dentist. Actually, my kids all had their dentist appointment. And guess what, they all have cavities. So I better build a bunch of these brooders to uh, pay for the dentist bill that coming up and filling a bunch of cavities in three kids, so. And it's my own fault. I guess I need to uh, teach them how to uh, brush their teeth a little better. Okay, I'm back here. We're gonna. My wife just so rudely interrupted me. No, oh, just kidding. She's catching up on her day. All right, so we're gonna take the screws out of this servo, and I'll take this bottom off, and that little thing will pop out there. So I'll set these off to the side. And I'm actually going to get this bag out because there'll be some grease on these gears. And I don't want to get a bunch of dirt and stuff on them. And don't want to get grease on everything else. Um, so I'll pull this back housing or the top housing off. And there is a little 
rubber seal. This is a waterproof servo, so there's a little rubber seal, seal in there. Um, actually, we'll take this bail. We'll take this uh, bearing off. That should have actually just stayed in there. So we'll put this bearing back in that top housing and make sure the o is in the right spot. Okay, that bearing's still there. And if you get one a little different, you know, might look a little different, but I'll take this gear off. I'll set it on this bag. I'll take this gear off, set it on this bag. Um, I've got my screwdriver here, and this bearing is just kind of a press fit on uh, kind of the housing for the potentiometer. So I'm gonna take it off. There we go. Just kind of pry it off a little bit. Now some of these may have a stop, a physical mechanical stop. This didn't have one of those. This can actually just naturally free spin, and it's the potentiometer, which is right here, that's telling it to stop, go, left, right, whatever. So I'm gonna plug this servo back in, and I'll plug it into power, and I'll turn my receiver on. So you can see it's on, it's running. Um, my stick is centered, and that's because this potentiometer is not centered. So once you center the potentiometer, this servo will stop. So you see I'm just kind of barely turning it there, and there it's centered. Oh, and you, at this point in time, you want to make sure your receiver is centered as well, uh, like the trim limits is centered. Uh, but what we want to do is we basically, uh, we want to remove this potentiometer, or isolate the signal for this potentiometer. So on this servo, the easiest thing to do is just get my cutters and snip. Gone. Now, now it just so happens it stopped in center. It's not like cutting that off prevented this. If I still turn this, it will still run. What I need to do is I need to now glue this potentiometer in place. Uh, and I have seen guys, there are some videos that's out there by electronically isolating the potentiometer. That's kind of a good idea as well. Uh, my box of miscellaneous resistors is at work, so uh, that's not really an option. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this potentiometer and glue it in place. So that will then prevent that from turning the gear. So take a drop of my handy dandy super glue, and I'll put a drop on this side and a drop on this side. And I want to keep it inside here. I don't want that spilling out everywhere because i got to get that bearings and stuff on. We want your gears to move free. So as I'll hold that up close, you can see that potentiometer uh, that we cut off right there. Kind of cut it about flush with flush cutters and drop some glue in there. Now, I'm an impatient person. I don't like to wait. So I'm going to use an activating agent for my super glue. And that is just plain old baking soda. And some guys might see this and cringe. I don't care. This is what I like to do. Uh, baking soda will basically harden that... Um, super glue immediately. It's like an acting agent. This is my Bondo. For when I'm gluing plastic stuff together and there's a small gap, I'll use that baking soda. Um, works great. And so now that that's in there, this is your last chance to kind of uh, make sure the potentiometer is centered because if it's not centered, it will make the uh, servo spin. So I'm going to blow off the extra. And now it's in there. And it's glued and basically that it like this uh, baking soda as soon as it touches the um, super glue it hardens quickly so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this for a second and I'll put this all back together I'll uh, squeeze that back onto there still spins you know make sure everything still spins works we don't want to glue this back together and I'll be uh, stuck together I'll put this this gear back on my receiver's beeping at me saying, hey, what's going on? And I'll put this gear back in. Get the gears lined up and get it in. Now, let me find that uh, seal from before. Oh, the seal stuck there. Steel seal stayed there, so you can see it right in there. So I'm going to put my top housing back on. And then let me get my bottom housing. started here just a second hold your horses transmitter 
Okay. And now I'm going to screw this back together. And then we'll plug it in and test it. Make sure I didn't screw it up and ruin the servo. So, that, in my opinion, this is a pretty easy servo to convert. You saw it just takes a few minutes. Dab of super glue, some flush cutters, and if you're impatient, like I said, you can drop a little bit of baking soda in there. That'll also give it kind of a filler in there to help create some goo in there for the uh, super glue to stick to. So, that's done. Let me uh, plug my uh, servo back in, and it's sitting there still. As I go left, continuously rotates. As I go right, continuously rotates. As I let go, it stopped. So there we are. Just got my continuous rotation servos. So on to the next step, which is the Bruder Teardown. The fun stuff.